Good morning, guys. Welcome back to Siege Play Channel. Um, today we're gonna do an April garden tour. It's a little chilly outside. Um, we're having actually a, a real spring here in Central <laughs> Texas this year. Um, so like the nights are getting down into the 50s. The days are only like 75. We've had a couple of odd like 90 days, but like they're not that bad. So yes, let's go. I needed to put my coffee in a to-go mug. Slip on some boots, cause the grass is very wet. Let's go check out the garden. Cooper's ready for the garden tour. Cooper, you wanna go outside, buggy? Dogs first, always. Dogs first, then coffee. So a lot of people find this channel because of my garden tours. I'm gonna give a real quick elevator speech and then we'll get started. If you are a returning viewer, feel free to skip ahead about mm, 30 seconds. So my quick elevator speech is that I'm an urban suburban gardener. I've been gardening on balconies, community gardens, rental houses. We just bought a house and built this big garden. Um, and this is my first garden tour in this new garden. So for garden tours like this, we just kind of go around, chit chat. I tell you everything that's going on, everything I've observed. Um, and if you want to subscribe, come subscribe. There's gonna be a lot of evolution happening in this space over the next, let's be honest, couple years. <laughs> okay, so we'll actually come check out this bed first. So this bed was actually already built when we moved into this house. Um, it's very sturdy. It's built with like some seriously massive bolts and pretty thick, um, pretty thick boards. So it was full of grass. Um, when we moved in so I've had to pull all of that and honestly it's not it's not a difficult grass to pull but the rhizomes underneath the soil and if you don't know rhizomes are like these creepy crawly little roots um, and then your grass will kind of just pop up in different places so keeping on top of pulling the grass has been honestly kind of therapeutic <laughs> so you can see the grass is like real bad right here um, and just in different places, ironically enough, that half of the bed did not have the same grass problem. Sometimes when you're weeding this grass, you get like a, a really good one and you get some of the rhizomes and it is like highly, highly satisfying. Um, but honestly, it's not, like I said, it's not hard to pull. I do have, in regards to weeds, I do have Bermuda in, the, in some of the beds, but <clears throat> you know, what are you gonna do? So this bed, I have tomatillos in the back, determinate tomatoes in the middle, and peppers in the front. And then interspersed are like herbs, that's some purple alyssum, we have some snapdragons, some marigolds. And then as we kind of come down here, um, I actually have some borage that's about to just totally explode so i'm super excited for that so this garden bed has been really interesting to watch evolve because i don't know what soil was originally in this bed so i've just really kind of had to work with whatever soil was in here we did top it off with some soil conditioner and some mulch and that seems to really be like retaining the moisture but um, my determinate tomatoes, um, I'm trying a bunch of different varieties. Basically the short story is last year was my first year growing determinate tomatoes and canning tomato sauce. And I caught the bug. <laughs> Um, it was so fun using all of the tomato sauce that I canned um, all winter and so um, like a normal person I actually decided to triple my determinate tomato output with my new garden. So last year I had about nine plants that were producing really well and this year I have 30. <laughs> and they are all gonna get ripe right around the same time at the beginning or mid-June. I might have really signed myself up <laughs> for some stuff, but we'll see. So I've been really impressed with how strong these determinant tomato plants are getting. The stems are like massively huge, especially this one. I mean, the stem is just so thick. And so I'm keeping them on here with these little clips but what i'll be doing this week is i'll be taking some twine and i'll be doing a florida weave to kind of keep these guys in check and my peppers are doing okay some of the hotter peppers um, don't love this cooler weather with both peppers and tomatillos 
Um, from what I'm remembering from past years and what I've been told, they do way better <laughs> once it really starts to get uh, really warm at night. That's kind of the key to that is the evenings being nice and warm, um, which I, I didn't really put that all together until somebody said it to me actually on my Instagram. Um, but yeah, so this bed is doing really, really well. Um, I'm excited for everything to kind of grow in here and really it's retained water really well too. I'm a tiny bit concerned and I'll show you why. So our property does have a bit of a slope and this bed seems to be kind of buckling here. I think this is where it's taking the majority of the weight. Um, so that's something we'll have to keep an eye on. Well, the birds are singing the songs of their people this morning. Goodness gracious. And if you want a full rundown of every single variety that I'm growing, um, I will be that person that points you to another video um, and kind of tell you to go there because uh, it's a great video. It's real long. It goes through literally every single variety. I'll go through some of the more unique ones in this video, but uh, in general, that's your, that's your best bet. This bed um, is going to be peppers on the outside interspersed with like, here's some holy basil. Um, I'm not really sure how to manage holy basil, Tulsi. Um, so if you have any suggestions, let me know. And then there's some other flowers that I don't remember what they are. Um, but these are all peppers. Now, I didn't actually label my peppers very well this year, which is very on brand. Um, so I don't know which one's which, um, except for a select few. And then we have a bunch of eggplants. So these determinant tomatoes are also doing really, really well, but I will say, I think that these ones might be doing slightly better. So these are planted directly in the ground. And I did a whole garden build video where I literally went through like every single step I did to basically build this garden. So these beds that are in ground, I tilled down 10 inches and then I added probably four or five inches of amendments and mulch on top. So their roots definitely have places to go, um, but I would be lying if I said I wasn't a little bit concerned about the whole clay soil issue. Um, so only time will tell, unfortunately. <laughs> And so these beds are all designed very similarly. We've got some peppers, we've got some uh, determinate tomatoes, and actually wanted to show you guys this. I've literally never seen a tomato do this. I thought this tomato was done for because it was leaning so bad, but look at this. It's literally at like a right angle, and then it goes at another right angle. <laughs> and like, I truly have no idea how this thing survived um, and I didn't even catch that it was doing this like weird growth thing until it was like way too late so I kind of just I kind of just let it ride <laughs> now this bed right here are all my indeterminate tomatoes so the plan is this week I actually need to put up some poles so that they can lean on the poles until they grow up here and we can start clipping them to this fencing um, but let's talk about varieties. So if you haven't caught on yet, um, tomatoes are my favorite thing to grow, um, which is ironic because apparently I was allergic to tomatoes when I was a kid, a kid which I recently found out from my mom. But uh, my determinant tomatoes, and I talked about this in a previous video, I never prune my determinant tomatoes because they kind of have a genetically determined way that they're gonna grow. Um, my indeterminate tomatoes, on the other hand, which is this bed of tomatoes, um, they, if, as long as you support them they will keep growing 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 they will continue to keep growing so um, for airflow purposes um, because we get really humid here in this part of the country so for airflow I prune my my indeterminate tomatoes up at least six to eight inches um, before I do anything with them. I also plant them a little closer together than is recommended um, I do about 18 inches um, and that too lends itself to creating more of an airflow type of a situation. Oh, I already told you I have about 30 determinant tomato plants and I think there's around six varieties within that 30. Um, my indeterminate tomatoes are all heirloom varieties and I think I have about uh, 27 of those. <laughs> so I went a little crazy. Um, I think I really wanted to try a lot of different ones this year. Um, so I think probably next year I will focus in on the ones that I really, really enjoy. Um, and we'll kind of go from there. I think I just like planning this new garden. I think uh, my creativity got the better of me this year. <laughs> 
So normally I like to be a lot more organized with my planting, um, but that just didn't happen this year. So this is a large red cherry tomato. They're like some nice fat cherry tomatoes. I've grown these every year for years and they do amazingly. Um, this is a Valencia. So this is a small orange tomato um, that I've never grown before. So I'm excited for that one. Uh, this is a Ponderosa pink and I, it's a bigger slicer tomato and it looks like it actually has blossoms in there, which is awesome. Um, but I actually have had trouble with the brandy wine types. So I'm really excited to see how this goes. Um, I also have a chef's choice hybrid orange. Um, so this is a hybrid. This isn't an heirloom, but it's still a fun, colorful tomato. This is a Kellogg's breakfast. I didn't grow this one from seed. I got this one from a nursery, um, but it's super healthy. I actually lost. I had a green zebra tomato here that I was really excited about that I lost um, to a windstorm. It just broke the top right off. Um, and then moving down here, we have the yellow brandy wine, and this is the potato leaf. Um, variety so you have your regular fan leaves like this and then you have your potato leaves like this um and it kind of just is luck of the draw based on what you get you have golden jubilee these are a smaller kind of like baseball size uh yellow tomato that are really nice and sweet we have a pink brandy wine that's crushing it and then moving down the line here we have black crim this is a pretty standard heirloom that's really really tasty um and then this is a purple rain tomato i tend to enjoy the purple tomatoes because they have this really deep savory flavor and i really love eating tomatoes like on sandwiches where it like complements the other parts of the sandwich really well so um, I tend to gravitate more towards the purple and black tomato varieties or the total other way and I tend to go towards like really sweet um, orange or yellow varieties. So I definitely grow some traditional red tomatoes um, for like fresh eating but uh, I definitely lean, lean in more towards the colors. So if we come around here, uh, this one is this is a Dr. Weiches, so this will be another slicer. Um, this was another uh, transplant that I bought. I didn't grow that one myself. Um, and then moving on down the line, this is a Hassanator. Um, and so this is gonna be a big fat red tomato. And then these next two are Paul Robeson's. Paul Robeson's, if you've never had a Paul Robeson tomato, it is absolutely the best BLT sandwich. Nobody can tell me otherwise. They are so good. The flavor is so complex. They are 100% my favorite tomato to grow. Um, and then this is a raspberry mochi tomato. I've never grown this one before. Um, and I don't have a label for this next one. <laughs> So this one's gonna be a surprise because I don't have a label for it. This is a purple boy tomato, so same thing, uh, smaller purple. There is a chef's choice black, so that's gonna be another really dark purple tomato. And then these two on the end, this is a beefsteak, which is hilarious. I've grown big tomatoes in the past for slicing, but I've never grown just your traditional beefsteak tomato, so I'm pretty excited to just kind of see what that's like. Um, and then on the end here, we have a red brandy wine, which is also doing really, really well. And I've definitely told this story before, but um, I was actually told by some people at the community garden that I used to garden with that you couldn't grow tomatoes, like big slicer tomatoes here in Texas. And I thought to myself, well, as much as I appreciate your experience, I think I'm still gonna try it for myself. And I've actually been very successful. And I think there's a few keys to like growing tomatoes in really hot, humid climates. One of them is to get them in the ground at the appropriate time, um, to plant them really deep and to water them probably only once or twice a week really deeply. Um, so I actually have a little trick that I was telling my friend's gonna water my garden while I'm gone for a few days. And I was telling her, I actually count to 10 when I'm watering my tomatoes and five when I'm watering my peppers. So I'll literally do one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi. And for some reason that seems to work for me. And um, especially when you have really good gardening practices that will, you know, make sure that you're using mulch to retain the moisture, things like that. You really don't have to do anything crazy. Tomatoes like to be watered deeply once or twice a week um and they're also really dramatic like i always say divas are or tomatoes are total divas and so tomatoes will like look really droopy and sad when it's too hot um but then once the sun gets off of them they 
pop right back up. So um, these tomatoes are all looking really, really good. They're, they've been planted for probably, I would say three weeks, three and a half weeks, and they are looking just real perky. They've probably doubled in size. They were already on the smaller side when I planted them, so it's been really good to see them kind of, you know, thrive. The newest addition of the backyard garden has been the addition of the blackberries along the back fence. So I had a whole video talking about how to plant them, and some of them are uh, rooted cuttings like this guy, and some of them are plants that I bought at the nursery like this guy. So they're all looking really good. They're settling in pretty well. Um, this one, I wasn't sure if it was gonna make it. <laughs> I don't think it's going to, so we'll have to figure out what to do about that. But then look at this. That is my first blackberry flower, which is so exciting. I'm so pumped. Now, the other thing about this bed that we're gonna have to see how it goes is I actually planted squash in this bed. Um, so there's some summer squash, there's a yellow squash here, there's a zucchini down there, and then in the middle is a butternut squash. Um, and then I planted some, just some little zinnias that are just starting to pop up. So literally every year I say I'm gonna take a break from growing squash because we have squash vine borers and squash vine borers are the worst bug ever um, and they prevent you from growing squash without getting too far into the details. Now, I do have like this ray of hope <laughs> because one of my garden neighbors at the community plot a couple of years ago grew butternut squash very successfully. And so I think that it's gonna work. Now, I've, the more I understand about squash vine borer, the more I feel like I can beat it and the more I get disappointed. <laughs> So that's fine, um, but we're gonna test it out and see what happens. Sometimes certain areas can be infested with squash vine borer more than others. Um, we're just gonna ride and see how it goes. The other thing is I really wanted something else in, the in this bed that was gonna shield the ground to keep it cool um, because tomatoes, you know, they stop producing when it gets too hot. Um, and I think I would like to try and keep these tomatoes to see if I can grab a fall harvest off of them. Um, so TBD, stay tuned on that. Now, this blueberry plant, let's talk about it. I have had this crazy blueberry plant for years. Some of our best friends gave it to us as a housewarming gift when we moved into our rental house. Um, and it has produced maybe two blueberries for the last three years. And admittedly, I have not been the best blueberry uh, parent, if we're being honest. So. Blueberries need multiple varieties to pollinate each other and they also need very specific soil. Oh, there is something crawling in there that I don't want to be a part of. Oh, what are you? No, I'm good. So um, they need really acidic soil, so you have to be fertilizing it, blah, blah, blah. So I'm actually repurposing this metal bed back here. Um, I'm currently filling it up with twigs and grass clippings. <laughs> Um, this is a project that'll probably take a while and I probably won't even complete it until next spring. Um, but I'm planning on getting a couple more blueberry plants and actually just filling this with blueberries um, and having it be like a little circle of blueberries um, so that they can all cross pollinate each other. So stay tuned for that, um, but let's move on. So again, same design here for this bed. We have peppers on this side, determinate tomatoes here, and then we actually have indeterminates right here. So the indeterminates we have here are Brad's Atomic Grape, and then we have a Cherokee Purple Tomato here. Um, we have another large red cherry tomato there, a Sun Sugar Hybrid, which is a cherry variety, black strawberry, uh, white cherry, um, this is a Napa Chardonnay, and then we have a yellow pear tomato. And you've probably noticed the addition of these. These are tomato ladders from Gardener Supply. Now, I needed to figure out a way to trellis these tomatoes. <laughs> um, and I didn't want to build another arch, so I invested in some of these different kind of trellising methods. I also have some really big tomato cages from Gardener Supply, and I'm kind of just testing it all out to see how it works because I haven't found any traditional tomato cages that work well for indeterminate tomatoes. I'm really excited to try these out and kind of see how they go. Um, and the ones that don't have cages right now, those are the ones that are gonna have the big tomato cages, so. TBD, we'll see how it all shakes out. Um, but I am pretty excited just to try out some new stuff because I have had the same tomato cages that I got from Amazon. <laughs> I've been using those for 
probably three or four years now. So I'm excited to just kind of try something different. Um, and I think you can use them for a variety of things. It doesn't just have to be tomatoes. So we didn't really go through any of the determinant varieties, but I do want to talk about this determinant variety. This is called an Alini Gold tomato. And I have never had this happen, but these tomatoes did extremely poorly within like the seed starting trays however and they're they're even kind of taking a slow start right now but now that i've gotten them established they are looking phenomenal and these alini gold tomatoes are really cool because they're one of the few determinant varieties that are actually like an orangey yellow and so i've had this whole idea and again if you've been here you probably have heard me say this 500 times i want to make sunshine sauce i want to can tomato sauce that is like an orangey goldy color because that just sounds fun <laughs> moving over here to my arch trellis i have a very large tall arch trellis super pumped about it um i have my cucumbers coming up um so it looks like i think we missed the one right here so maybe those seeds didn't come up yet um but we have some cucumbers popping up that i'm probably gonna have to thin out but i'm super excited about cucumbers and then on this side of the trellis we have some personal melons so um so they're popping up today as well um i think we might have to reseed a couple of them but that's fine and then i'll have a big watermelon plant right in the middle here um so we have some cilantro that's kind of going to seed and um, that's a sun gold tomato that I will support up this trellis. <laughs> and these are the beds where I know I'm gonna have issues with the Bermuda grass. I think what I've found with Bermuda is you just have to be consistent. You just can't let it get too overgrown because then it's gonna be harder to kind of manage again. So next, let's actually move over to the orchard, which is still not done, <laughs> but it's getting close. So that's what's been going on in my garden. I'm really excited to kind of watch it evolve. I love going back and watching my own garden tours <laughs> to see how the garden changes, but I need to water this baby. So thanks so much for watching. Happy gardening. Subscribe for more content. Like the video. Leave a comment. Blah, blah, blah. All the things. <laughs> thanks so much for watching. Happy gardening. We'll see you next time.